Did Steve and Diane suffer from real sadistic abuse and witness murders? Or have their memories distorted the abuse they suffered and transformed it in their minds into murder? I turn to memory and trauma expert, Dr. Daniel Brown, to help us find the answers. Steve and Diane agreed to undergo a series of tests under his direction. When Diane was being tested, she relived her experiences so powerfully that her physical reactions could be measured. Your heart rate uh, rose almost 40 beats per minute, which is uh, quite a spike. Your muscle tension level arose significantly, and the uh, skin conductance also arose significantly. Diane? I, I have no doubt from the testing that, that you clearly are suffering from post-traumatic stress. You clearly have been severely traumatized. Right. That's fact. That's absolutely clear. Mm -hmm. I could find nothing in the testing that would account for the source of that post-traumatic stress other than your report about the experiences with your father. Dr. Brown's tests showed that as a result of the traumas they've experienced, Diane's memories become confused, whereas Steve fills in the gaps of his memory. That could be worded another way. It could be said uh, that since uh, the trauma of these murders has messed you up, you're no longer a good witness because you're messed up by what you saw. And that's a clear possibility. Yeah. That one of the unfortunate things here That's that certainly can happen in general is that people are traumatized and abused and for other reasons there are things that would cause some questioning of the credibility of their reports even though they were genuinely traumatized and abused but the standard of the court then would not allow that you see right so even though you may have been abused. That's why we're approaching it this way. There is a trail of murders. We can show the trail of murders. We're telling about it. And really, isn't it somebody else's job to prove this? I still care for my father. I want to help this guy. And the best thing I can do to help him is to confront him with the truth so he can deny it and go to hell if there is a hell. And that's, and that's exactly what he needs for what he's done. That's the best I can do for him. I'm not trying to get even with my father. There's, how do you get even with a guy who's, who's done this? There's thousands and thousands of people whose lives have been affected by this. My advice to both of you is that with the uncertainty of what we know about memory in general, uh, you may never get the kind of certainty that you want about what happened. Without cooperative evidence, you may not really know to any degree of certainty or satisfaction. And at some point, uh, moving on with your life, even without that certainty or learning to tolerate the uncertainty, is important. And not becoming so preoccupied that, that recovering the memories and getting the evidence becomes itself your life, of your life. Dan Brown is convinced that Steve and Diane suffered terrible abuse as children. Can this be substantiated by anyone else in their family? Steve and Diane have two older sisters and a younger brother and sister. I spoke to all of them. Not surprisingly, they were reluctant to speak publicly about their father. But one of the older sisters, Sandy, did agree to go on camera. Four years ago, when Steve and Diane remembered the murders, she moved from New Jersey to Utah. Quite often, Stephen and Diane would go to places with my father, and I, in my mind as a child, I thought they were the favorite children, because why did they always get to go off with Dad somewhere, and I never got to go with him. Stephen talks it, about it as though it was a, a strategy of your father's to keep you all separate. It would make perfect sense, military strategy, divide and conquer, never let one person know what the other person knows because then they could never get together and say, hey, something's going on here, maybe we should do something about it. Yeah, I could see that. Have you ever at any stage had a sense that he had killed people? Yeah, I think I'm sitting on the fence about it right now because I don't have my own memories to validate. Um, it's a scary thought. It's a real scary thought. And I do remember sitting in the car a lot like this and my protection was to close my eyes right at the moment something happened. That I learned, somehow or another I learned to just shut my eyes, turn my head, right at the moment something happened. And for everybody else, did you see what happened? Uh, no, I didn't see anything because I would turn my head. 
maybe instinctually I knew as a child, so I would never witness anything that was brutal. Sandy has a terrible childhood memory. It was during the Cold War. She told a friend that her father was a Russian. Well, soon after that, I was called home. And when I was called home, my father took off his belt and started beating me and told me I was never, ever to tell stories like that again. I remember just, I don't know whether I went unconscious or, you know, what kids do, they leave their body. But I do remember my mother coming in and screaming, you're going to kill her, you're going to kill her. I always had the sense that if we were really bad enough, he would kill us. And I do not have a second thought of that as a child. There's no more painful childhood memories for Steve and Diane than what happened to them at Fort Devons. I went there with them to the abandoned house they used to live in. And I do remember Stephen receiving the brunt of the abuse in the family. We were always hearing him get beat or thrown in his room or whatever that would happen that happened behind closed doors that I knew nothing about, but I knew it was not a good thing. I'm surprised he's still alive, actually. They locked me in my room here uh, for, I guess, a week, maybe two. I was allowed to go to school, but when I came home, I had to stay in here. Uh, every day, you're just contemplating your mortality, and I remember st standing here and looking out the window, and at that moment, I said, you know, if I can see myself in a, as an adult coming back here, that means I can live, you know? Maybe that means I'm gonna live. And uh, uh, eventually there came a day when I did, I came and I stood out there and looked up at this window and saw myself as a boy. For me, it was always something very violent. If, uh, as a child, I, I couldn't even deem it as sexual abuse because I, I really don't want to talk about what he did to me in Devon's Crest, but he what, didn't use any part of his own body. My mother protected my father on her deathbed. She would never say anything against him. And I believe that's where her cancer came from because she was holding all these secrets all these years and all the grief and the anger and the confusion basically killed her. That's what killed her. She, her the lies she kept to protect my father is what killed her. <laughs> 